I still like uh, to drive because it's a faster way. For me, it's a faster way and a safe, safer way to go from point T to point B. I would make the decision to stop driving if I felt that I was uh, dangerous on the road. And right at this point, I don't feel that I am, and I drive with my family, and they, I know they would tell me if they thought I was. I have a lot of children, and many of them live around here, and I really didn't want them to worry, and I knew that they were worrying. And so one day, after I moved into this building, which is perfectly located for a person without a car, I just decided that it was time. I didn't want the kids to worry, and I didn't want to be nervous. Uh, my eyesight is not the best at this time of life. And so I just told the kids not to worry that I wasn't going to drive anymore. My re reflexes are slow, and if I see a turn coming up and I don't identify the right uh, location or the right road, I'm going to ride, drive right by it before I'm able to do anything about it. So. Uh, the Parkinson's has slowed down my uh, response, and it's part of the reason why I don't drive at night. Driving on the highway is hard because I have to keep track of so many things at once. I have to keep track of my speed, keep track of the speed of the other people around me. I have to be aware of what lane I'm in. and. And I, I, I used to pay, I used to pay scant attention to that. It happened automatically. I do most of the driving. I do all of the highway driving now, um, and I do most of the local driving. Um, and I'm accepting it because I have to. But I really, on highway driving, I would love some trade-off. If I were not able to drive, I would feel very restricted because so much of what we do every day involves driving. But clearly, it's, it, there will come a time in which it's necessary not to be driving. There are no consistent policies across the United States that dictate when a person is safe to drive or not safe to drive. And the states and, and jurisdictions are trying to figure this out on their own. I really believe that it's a um, public health paradigm that we need to start uh, taking, that there's a responsibility for the licensing authority, there's responsibility for the community in terms of the uh, aging network of formal and informal services. There's also a responsibility in terms of the family and the, and the individual to, uh, to accept that driving is a privilege, it's not a right, and when driving is, uh, is not safe, that we need to uh, keep that individual engaged in life. We need to have supportive, dementia-friendly, senior-friendly transportation available to them. In our society, when adult children, when doctors, when spouses think about taking, may not be the T-bird away, but it may be really a beloved car, when driving privileges are, are threatened, um, reactions are strong. It's important for family members to be proactive around the driving issue. So being proactive might mean conversations early on in the process with a family member about monitoring their driving. They can work with the person who has Parkinson's to try to help them self-limit their driving. Maybe they stop driving on highways and drive a bit more locally on days when they're not feeling well, that they can make decisions not to drive, um, that the transition from driver status to passenger status ideally doesn't happen, you know, in one fell swoop, that it's a process over time. The first step for a family member who is observing that their loved one is struggling with driving problems is for them to obtain professional advice about what the resources are in the community. Is there a driving assessment program locally? 
are there people who can advise them about driving alternatives? They need to empower the loved one so the loved one feels that the locus of control is theirs. Probably the biggest challenge in addressing the to drive or not to drive question is finding the balance. Um, on the one hand, one never wants to prematurely take away uh, the, the privilege of driving. Um, you don't want to end driving too soon. The flip side of that is that you would never want to wait too long, which can have deadly consequences. I trust that he drives now when he feels he can. Uh, but it, I, th I think if I start feeling really tense, if it looks like he's just not doing it right, that will be another criteria. I don't want to have to have an accident before we make up this, make this decision.